What's going on guys? It's Killin' here with Brandon from Fugacidic. Minutes with some more Black Ops 3 action in this video. I'm gonna show you guys how to get the Easter egg on Dryzen Drac. It's pretty simple, it can be tricky though. Um, but it's gonna be solo and co-op. I did it solo, took me two tries. Um, but I'm gonna be telling you guys, you know, when, whenever something varies between solo and co-op, I'll make sure to make the distinction. But it's pretty similar for the most part. Um, but anyways, first thing you guys are going to want to do is obviously get the Wrath of the Ancients and upgrade your bow. If you're playing solo, I highly recommend you guys get the Lightning Bow. It saved me so many times. In my opinion, it's uh, one of the best ones. So I would highly recommend you guys get that one. After you upgrade it, though, go back and grab the, uh, the first bow that is not upgraded. You're going to need it for one step, which is the very first step. Head to the teleporter room and shoot those beacons above the teleporter. They're going to turn this orangish, reddish color as you can see right there when, uh, when, you, when you hit them. You have to hit every single one. When you do, they're all going to turn back to like the bluish white and uh, you'll hear a sound. Now you have to go shoot these wisp electrical ball things with your upgraded bow. So go back, grab your upgraded bow. These are the locations where the wisps will spawn. In the control room, there's the clock up there. Also in the control room behind that pillar in the corner uh, is another spot it could spawn. You can also spawn in the power room right there and uh, by the foam. In Maxis's room, right beside Samantha's room uh, on that globe. The next one is going to be above double tap in that corner right there by the Wonder Sphere, across from the Wonder Sphere. Underneath uh, by the uh, double tap, back of the back of the car, the back tire of the car. And uh, finally cro across from Quick Revive and to spawn the phone on the desk. Now I'm going to show you guys really quick, I'm going to speed this up, just show you guys the route I took. Now you guys can do it whatever way you want. Just go in circles until uh, you, you see where they're, where they're spawning. They're going to spawn randomly. You have to hit four of them with your upgraded bow. Once you hit four in a row, it's going to unlock the next part. You're going to hear a sound indicating that you've done it correctly. If you hear a creepy sound of a door closing, You've done it incorrectly and you have to restart. You do not have to hit the beacons above the teleporter again, okay? You don't, but you do have to flip the round and then the wisps, the wisp things, the electrical ball things will respawn. Once you've done it completely, correctly, go down to the teleporter. It should be glowing purple as you've just seen there. Teleport and you'll be going back in time. You will see Dr. Groff right there. Head straight to the left, pick up that blue canister filled with zombie souls, first thing you wanna do. There's three important things you wanna do. That's the first one. The second one, you gotta get the fuses. And uh, the third one is probably the most important. So the fuses are right about there. If you're not sure, just go all the way around the room pressing square. But make sure you go back to Dr. Groff before he closes the safe because he's gonna input a code. You have to see which code he's putting into the safe. If you guys don't know what the code is, you guys are going to have to redo this and uh, do this part and, and get the code. So look at the code. It's going to be different every time you play, so don't take my code. Um, it's going to be different. Write it down however you guys can memorize it. I called that D Lightning D. Uh, that's the easiest way I, I kind of remember it. So you have to remember, memorize that code. You need it. All right. So next part you guys want to do, go up to the death ray and uh, go on one side, not that side. We're going to do that side after. You're going to put the fuse on that side there, then go back to that side. Press square to turn it from destroy mode to protect mode. Very important. Now, the computers right down these stairs are what you're going to have to go to to input the password that you've seen Dr. Groff use. They're off for me because you had to turn the death ray on first at least once, okay? Once you turn the death ray on, go ahead and there's, you're going to see all those symbols on the uh, little monitors. Input the password as I just did for me it was D, rocket D as I like to call it. Input the password and uh, you should have done it correctly. You'll hear like a little doo -doo -doo sound <laughs> or whatever. Go back downstairs to the teleporter room. The safe will be open. Go up to the safe and press square to pick up these fuses. I know, it's, there's a lot of running around. But once you do that, back up to the death ray machine. There's these two Tesla coils. You have to put the uh, a fuse in each one in the pillar. There's one there and one there. You push square to, to put them in, by the way. Go back to the death ray machine. Press square on it to go back from protect to destroy mode. And now we're going to play a little game of Simon Says. So for the first one, I'm going to show you guys the whole thing. You have to go up to it, press square on that little box under the main monitor. Make sure you pause your game if you can, or at least memorize the, co the, the order uh, that you've seen those screens, because it's going to show a symbol on the big screen, and you have to hit the monitor that you had seen uh, the coordinating symbol on. So it's very important you memorize it. Just quickly type it, write it, whatever you can. But uh, you're only going to see it once before the game starts. If you fail it, you're going to have to restart it. And uh, it's just not fun, obviously, right? So, like I said, I'm gonna show you guys this whole section just so, so you guys can kind of see. And you can't, again, you can't take my order because the order changes every single game. So you can't just pause it in my video and see like, oh, well, that's the order it's gonna be. It's gonna change every single game. So make sure you guys, you know, write it down. Very important. You have to do this at two different locations. This is gonna be the first one. And I'll show you the second one in a second. 
So once you're done, all the screens are gonna turn off. You're gonna see that one of the Tesla coils are now glowing. And when you're done the second one, the second Tesla coil is gonna glow. So second one is gonna be on the launch pad. And uh, you know, I got super lucky and right at the end, the, the rocket was just about to test fire and I finished it just in time. So anyways, I skipped all the gameplay just for the sake of time. You're gonna hear another like little doo -doo -doo kind of sound. I don't know, whatever, you know. Um, and then the second Tesla coil is going to be going crazy. So go back up to the death ray. Like I said, a lot of running around. There's a green button on the back of it that is now lit. Go up to it and press square. And when you do that, it's going to send uh, Dempsey, the rocket with containing Dempsey, uh, you know, Dempsey's capsule or whatever. It's going to send it back down, crashing on Earth. You're going to see it fly through the bell tower. Um, I'm going to let you guys see this part just so you guys, you know, know that you've done it correctly. Um, but yeah, so you're going to see it fly. It's going to hit that bell. And you're going to want to go down the stairs and uh, go to the crash site because right here in the middle there's a, this little rod you see it right there go up to it press square it's the golden rod doesn't look very golden but uh it's apparently called the golden rod I don't, don't ask me anyways pick that up you're gonna need it very soon so next thing you want to do you gotta have to do all the wisps again all right you have to do it once more and then you have to go through the teleporter so again i'm cutting the gameplay you guys already know what it is uh at the start of each round the wisps spawn so you know just flipping you around if you don't see the wisps and uh, do all that again, hit four in a row, go back to the teleporter, it should be purple, you have to go through time once more. Now, Dr. Groff is not going to be there this time, and uh, so we're going to go back, and uh, there's one important thing you got to do, okay? So you got to go up to this book, I'm going to freeze frame it as soon as we get to it, I got a little bit confused. This book right here, go up to it and press square. X if you're on Xbox One, square if you're on PlayStation. Once you do that, this tablet, this little box is going to open up. You're going to hear the sound of it opening. Walk up to it, press square to pick up that tablet. It is the Keeper's tablet. You need it. It's very important. You very you need it because if you don't get it, you're not going to be able to do the next part. So <laughs> make sure you guys get that. If you mess up and you don't do it in time, then uh, go back. But you have you have a lot of time. And uh, once you get it, you know you have to go back over here to where you got the bow and place the golden rod in the uh, that tomb of that uh, fallen soldier right in front of where you got the uh, very first bow, the Wrath of the Ancients. It's going to spawn this uh, the Keeper, this ghost thing, man. It's pretty crazy. I mean, look at it. You got to follow it to four different locations, and uh, it's going to stop in front of four different, like, kind of tombs, and uh, you don't really, I guess, know their tombs. There's no, you know, real good indication of their tombs, uh, but there will be, like, a little stone tablet, like, kind of like you picked up, uh, just now, right behind where he's standing. If there's not that stone tablet, just walk up to him, uh, around to the wall, and press square. You can see it right there, there's a stone tablet. Um, but if there isn't, if you don't see it, press square. There's going to be a white ring right close to him. When you stand into it, it's going to expand. You have to kill zombies with your bow. Now, if you're playing co-op, you can see there's a glow at the bottom of my screen. I'm solo, so every time I go into each spot, it's always going to be the same color, indicating that's going to be the lightning bow, because I'm solo. Now, if you're playing co-op, say you're playing four players, uh, each spot is going to be a different bow. So you're going to need someone to do each spot. They have to get kills with their bow while standing inside the circle. The zombies do not have to be inside the circle, but the person getting the kills with their bow has to be. All right, so you know you're doing it right if you see the souls flying into that little tomb thing towards the uh, keeper. You have to basically kill zombies for a full round. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy and get pretty intense, especially if you're on a high round. I'm on round 15 right now, solo. And uh, another thing to note is once you spawn the keeper, uh, dogs are gonna start spawning like you know instantly. So we're gonna speed up to the next part so you can see where the next location is. Again, if you're playing solo, it's gonna be the same bow for every location. If you're playing co-op, obviously the bows are gonna switch. Again, you can see there's a little glow at the bottom of my screen indicating, you know, it was like a little blue gl glow, indicating that I have to use the lightning uh, bow. So that was the second spot right by the double tap. The third spot is over here kind of, you know, by the power room, um, you know, by Samantha's room, you know, Max's room and all that. So uh, whatever you want to call this area, it's with all the statues. So again, for the sake of time, we're cutting out gameplay. We're going to the, the last location and uh, right here is going to be the, the next one and uh, fill it up. And here's the cool thing. Once you're done, the keeper is going to turn into a real person, like a, a real solid person. It's not going to be just a ghost or a glow anymore. It's going to be a real solid person. And you have to follow it downstairs to the pyramid room, the NDP room, whatever you want to call it, NPD, whatever. So a lot of this is just kind of following him, going downstairs, kind of waiting it out. So just follow him downstairs. Like I said, follow him down to the NDP. PD room. I always mix it up. NDP, NPD. I mix up the P and the D. Anyways, it's a pyramid room, all right? You got, you guys get the point. Follow them down here. You're going to see this pretty crazy thing. There's going to be like lasers 
kind of going at him, or he's, I don't know what he's doing, but anyways, he's teleporting to the moon. You're gonna hear some dialogue, um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, up the, the volume, I'm not gonna turn up the volume for you guys to hear, you guys are gonna know when you do it, you're gonna see him disappear, and you hear some dialogue, so, uh, just give me a whole little kind of dialogue cutscene, you're not gonna see anything where you're gonna hear it. Um, so just walk around. It's very important though that you have built the Ragnarok. If you don't know how, where to get the parts, go watch one of my other videos where I show you guys how to build the Ragnarok. Right there, I had to build it because you're gonna need it for the boss, and you have to you have to have it to even get into the boss stage, the boss fight. So you're gonna see a white glow when he comes back. He teleports the NDP, uh, sorry, the NPD from uh, from the moon. So this one's from the moon. Like how crazy is that? On the back of it though, you're gonna have to put the empty uh, zombie soul canister that you got earlier. Uh, when you went to uh, go see Dr. Groff in the, uh, you know, the, the flashback kind of uh, uh, scene, whatever you want to call it. You have to put it back there. And this part I got a little bit confused, I didn't know what to do. But, once he comes out right there, like you see, you have to, uh, you have to L2 slam, or left trigger slam, with your, uh, with your Ragnarok, your gravity spike. So pull them out, and uh, slam them down on one of these uh, little like squares that you use to turn on the anti-gravity. Once you do that, the boss fight will begin. So I'm gonna quickly explain the boss fight. There's uh, a bunch of different stages to it, but uh, it's basically rinse and repeat. So basically the first part of uh, the boss fight is he's gonna spawn all of these volcano things. Kind of like when you use the fire boat, you're gonna do everything you can to avoid them because if you run into them you're gonna take a lot of damage and there's obviously a chance to go down and you know you don't you want to avoid that so he's gonna spawn all these volcanoes avoid them you got these skeleton zombies chasing you as well once in a while you're gonna see these little like purple skull things chasing you uh, those little purple skull things uh, are gonna disappear on their own you don't have to really kill them um, but he's gonna do that and uh, so keep keep going around and uh, do that I'm not gonna show you guys a whole boss fight uh, I'm gonna show you guys the whole boss fight in another video but uh, anyways when you see that electric like glowing ball of drop in the center, run to it right away, put your gravity spikes down on it using L2, and now uh, that's gonna make him vulnerable so you can actually shoot him. His chest is gonna open like you see there, and just hammer him with your uh, with your bow. Now as soon as uh, you see his chest close up, run back, grab your gravity spikes. Now it's very important that if for some reason you cannot go put your gravity spikes down there in time, what that little glowing ball is gonna do if you, if you don't put your, your, your gravity spikes down is it's gonna disperse like this huge electrical kind of current. If that happens, you have to make sure you're standing behind one of those pillars to uh, protect yourself. If you're not, you're, you're, you're gonna get downed and it's gonna be game over, it's gonna be very sad. So um, make sure you either run really quick and put your gravity spikes down because that's your only time to really uh, hurt him or if you don't, if you can't, then hide behind one of the pillars. After he does that, a bunch of panzers are gonna spawn. This is also the, the, the phase where you're gonna recharge your, uh, your Ra Ragnarok, your gravity spikes because uh, they do have to be recharged to kill you know, all, the, all the panzers, all the, uh, the, you know, the skeleton zombies and all that. And uh, don't worry about him because he's not going to be here at, at the moment at least. So uh, keep killing them. I highly recommend using a, a pack-a-punch shotgun as uh, I finally pulled out here. Uh, when, you, when you first kill the first two, uh, two more panzers are going to spawn. You're going to get a max ammo in the center, but then two more panzers are going to spawn as you can see here. Once you kill them, another max ammo is going to spawn. So, uh, like I said, just keep going at it, kill the zombies, kill the panzers, and, uh, you know, by the time you're ready to fight the, the boss again, by the time he puts his glowing ball down, it, you know, you should have your Ragnarok all filled up. So, anyways, like I said, I'm going to cut this part of the gameplay out, I'm going to skip to the last time where, where, where I hammered him, because this is now rinse and repeat, he restarts the cycle, he starts putting the volcanoes down, it all, it all starts again. Dogs are going to spawn too once in a while. Uh, so just avoid the dogs. But this is the third time I, I, I attacked him. So like I said, just do exactly what I just said. Uh, keep doing that until, you know, he, he's basically dead. Rinse and repeat. Every, everything I just said, that whole process over and over again. Uh, make sure you, you guys obviously pick up your gravity spikes at the end of uh, each time you hit him. But right here is the time where I finally killed him. When you finally kill him, you're going to see your screen go white. You're going to teleport back. You are not done yet, so pay close attention. Zombies are going to start spawning. So watch your back, you have to do something, you have to do two quick things, very important. Now, when uh, the NPD uh, spawns back, go right to uh, the, where I just went, press square to put the uh, summoning key into it, and then go back to it, press square to take it back. So you have to put the summoning key into that little, you know, circle, like, thingy, whatever you want to call it, in front of the uh, NPD. 
And then you have to take it back by pushing square. As soon as you do that, run, 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 you're almost done. Run up these stairs, go to this like kind of control panel thing you played Simon Says earlier. Press square to put the summoning key in. And you are done, my friends. You have done the Easter egg under Eisendrak. That is it. It's it's really that uh, simple. Well, it's not simple, but that that's it. So you don't have to worry about zombies now. You can watch the cutscene. Uh, but I'm gonna end the video here because you know I don't want to spoil the ending of, of the of the video. You know I will have a video with uh, with the with the whole ending cutscene online if you guys want to check it out. Um, but uh, to avoid spoilers, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here. So that is it, my friends. Congratulations, you have completed Derizon Trox Easter Egg. And uh, it's pretty awesome. So enjoy it. Congratulations. That's going to wrap it up for me. If this video was helpful for you or if you enjoyed the video or both, please smack the like button. It's very, very much appreciated. Subscribe, like, comment, share, and all that awesome stuff. Make sure you share it with your friends. But that wraps it up for me, my friends. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Like always, until then, game on. The darkness taking up you.